If you enjoy reading books for knowledge or pleasure or the pleasure of knowledge, or you just want to become a more avid reader, chances are you wish you could read more books every year. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the method that I use to read at least 84 books a year. Now, 84 is a special number. We'll talk about that in a bit. But most importantly, the method I'm going to show you allows you to enjoy the reading process and form a habit around reading that will allow you to enjoy more books over the year. Let's go take a look. Reading 84 books is an oddly specific number of books to read, and there's a reason that I use this number, but before I go into the details on how I read at least 84 books a year using my method, and I share that method with you, as well as some different tricks and tips on how to do it easily, there is something that I feel is very important to state up front. Reading should be fun. Reading should be enjoyable. It doesn't matter how much you read if it's just some sort of way to reach some arbitrary number, 12 books a year, 100 books a year, whatever it might be. Whether you read one book or 100 books this year, it should be something you get personal value from doing. This video isn't about a book reading marathon to read just for the sake of reaching some arbitrary number, whether it's 12 books or 100 books or whatever the number may be. It's about reading with a more purposeful, pleasurable intent, but also reading more so that you can experience more. With that out of the way, I also do think that most people who read do wish that they could read more, and that people who don't read very much wish that they did read more. Why? Because reading has many proven benefits. There's the development of a perspective, knowledge of the world, empathy with others, exercising your imagination, improving your ability to communicate with others, improving relaxation and your mental state, building critical thinking skills and the ability to concentrate. There are so many benefits that it's no wonder people want to read more. Here's how I've created a system to do just that. 84 might seem like an oddly specific in terms of the number of books to read in a year, but for those of you with a little bit of mathematical background, you may have already started to analyze that number a bit. 84 is equal to 7 times 12, which in the case of reading would be 7 books read each month of the year. 7 itself is also an interesting number because that's how many days there are in a week, and that's the heart of my reading system. Any system that's intended to create change is something that should involve incremental work towards an end goal. Trying to power through 84 books in a year would actually be quite hard. Breaking that into 7 books a month, it's also hard, but maybe a little less intimidating. Setting a goal to read just 60 minutes a day, now that would be much easier to commit to, especially if we break it down to a morning and an evening reading session. You know, reading 60 minutes a day would be about 75 pages for the average reader, which would allow you to read 7 books of about 300 pages each in a month, or 84 books a year. This might seem like a lot when you look at the large number, but I have some tricks that I'll share with you on how to make it even easier to read that 75 pages a day, so stick around for those tips at the end of the system that I'm going to introduce you to. If you're fortunate to discover a book that you absolutely love, then the old saying, I couldn't put it down, becomes true. You finish it in a short time period because you take every opportunity to read it. It takes a hold of you. You can't stop reading it. Now, in my experience, this does happen with some magical and special books, but most often this doesn't happen 84 times in a row. People have different moods, different interests at specific times, during the days, during the week different books they might want to read depending on what their mood is at any specific time. Now variety and choice tends to improve your interest over time and it also supports your commitment. The idea of having novelty in your day or novelty in your reading makes the act of reading more effective. This absolutely applies to reading where you might not be feeling it for a certain book on a certain day and a quick break from that book might be all we need. Although I will say, don't be afraid to put a book down and stop reading it if it's not resonating with you at all. You don't have to finish every book that you pick up. Which is why I designed, or how I designed my system, to keep reading fun and to keep, and keep you reading more over time. The first step in the system I use is the creation and the categorization of a reading list. So what I'll do 
is I'll create seven high level topics, subjects, or genres that I'm interested in reading for say the next 12 to 16 weeks. Whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I'll create a list of books that I like to read and then categorize this reading list into seven distinct groups. As a personal example, I like things like literature, classic and modern. I like science fiction. I like science books. I like nature and outdoor adventure books. I like data and technology books. I like education and learning books, and I like business and creativity books. While these categories are not exhaustive of all my interests, they are distinct enough to accommodate variety in my reading, and they're broad enough to allow me to discover new books as they arrive. Your list will be personal to your own interests. You might prefer all fiction, or all nonfiction, or maybe a mix of the two, or even subcategories of a specific genre. So once I've got my categories together, what I'll do is I'll select a book. This is my step two. I'll select a book from each category for each month to read. So this creates my shelf for the month. It sets a specific goal for what I'm hoping to read that month. By looking at a small cross-sectional group of books, you create a variety of topics and interests and authors to read for the month. This means that you'll always have something that interests you in the moment if you're struggling with a difficult novel, you can take a break and read a little bit about business or some other category. This means that you can switch modes, but you're still developing consistency in your daily reading. Personally, I like to read for about 30 or so minutes in the morning and 30 or so minutes in the evening. And then I'll also have little 15 minute reading breaks throughout the day if possible. The goal here is to try and read 75 pages per day on average with at least 25 pages on any given day. Usually there's some days where we'll be a little bit too busy, so you won't get as much reading in, and maybe there'll be some days where you can read more than 75 pages. But by having an average of 75 pages per day, then you can think of most books being about 300 pages in length, 75 pages per day, that's 525 pages a week, which would be about 2100 pages a month, or seven books which times 12 months would be 84 books a year. I'll normally switch between a few different books from my reading shelf for the month on any given week. So in the end, by maintaining a daily habit, I'm going to have those weekly numbers add up by themselves. It'll become monthly numbers. It'll add up to the 84 books a year. I actually wind up reading a little bit more because what will end up happening is I'll have periods of time in the year where I get more or less reading done, but I maintain that 25 pages a day. That's sort of like the minimum that I'll do. That's really how simple my system is, but there are some challenges and some tricks that you can use to make it work more effectively and to keep you on track. Trick number one, plan ahead. I start the year with 14 books, two months worth of books, that I want to read and they're ready to go. There's two from each category that I've defined, and with some categories I might even have a few months of books planned out. For example, if I want to read an entire series of books by a certain author or on a certain genre. So that's a trick. Have those books available. Have that first two months worth of books available. Trick number two. Allow for discovery and recommendations. Well, I do try to pick eight to ten books from each category that I want to read in advance. Maybe they're books I want to read or reread. There is a thrill to discovering new books at your local bookstore or through friends' recommendations. A great way to add variety and excitement to your reading is to add some books from the different lists of books that others have produced. I, for example, always try to read at least one book that won a Canadian Book Award because I'm up here in Canada, or I like to read a book every year from a Pulitzer Prize winning author. I always want to read anywhere from three to five classic novels every year just to read some of the fiction from the past. I have, uh, there's lots of different lists out there, people that I follow online, and you can get recommendations from them as well. Let me know in the comments actually if you'd like to see a list of my favorite educational books. I have a lot of books on education and learning, so I should say that the 84 books I read will include some books for work, but I also do a lot of reading for work, so I actually read a lot more than 84 books a year. But anyways, but if you are interested in books on education and learning specifically, you can comment down below. You can also subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm thinking of doing some educational book reviews over the next year. Let me be know below again if you think that's a good idea. Anyways, onwards to trick number three. 300 page books are just the average. In my own system, 
I plan to read about 25 to 50 pages in the morning and 25 to 50 pages in the evening, with 75 being the average. Now, I don't want this to become mechanical. It does fluctuate a great deal, depending on different obligations and interests that I have at any given time. Some books are larger than others. However, keeping these numbers in mind as a general rule allows me to adjust as I go along. So for example, if I get a 600 page book, then I know that I'm going to need to maybe select three other books that are about 200 pages each in order to keep those averages aligned. Trick number four, graphic novels are your friend. If I'm getting a little off track on my reading objectives, then I might want to select a couple of graphic novels to read. Generally, these can be read very quickly and I get a sense of completion from finishing them. They're also something I happen to really enjoy, so there's that too, but today there are graphic novels across a wide variety of topics and you're sure to find something that will interest you. Trick number five, audiobooks are also your friend. This is sometimes argued, but I think that audiobooks are a completely viable way to read different books, especially novels. In some cases, I find listening to the audiobook even more enjoyable than reading the physical book or the printed book. For example, I remember listening to an audiobook called The Know-It-All, and it was hilarious. The narration was fantastic. It was a really good listen slash read. The nice thing about the audiobooks is that you can play them and you can listen to them while doing other things, like walking into work or driving. Because I don't recommend reading printed books while you're driving, stay safe out there. But the audiobooks, you can change the speed that you listen to them at, you can get some really great narration that really emphasizes it. I tend to prefer them for novels as opposed to anything else, just because of the nature of my note taking systems and such. You know, I find it hard to, you know, necessarily take a lot of notes on, say, a business book while I'm listening to it. But you, there are mechanisms to do that. That's beyond the subject here. But the idea is that the audiobook is a great way, for me at least, to listen to different novels in a unique way. I'll even listen to them sometimes when I'm going to sleep. You can put a sleep timer on them. So, tip five, audible books are your friends. Trick number six, track your reading. This is something I recommend, but I'm admittedly working at getting better on it personally. Keeping a list of all the books you're reading can have a great motivational effect, especially if you are sharing your results with others. For example, uh, you know, reading together is the genesis of a book club, but there's things like using the Goodreads app or website to track your reading, books you want to read, books that you are reading. And if you share that profile with your friends, then you can not only get book recommendations, but you also can go in and have sort of a accountability that's added to your reading goals for the year. Trick number seven, use technology. Now, this wouldn't be the Learning and Technology with Frank YouTube channel if I didn't promote how technology can help us. Over time, I'm really getting more into using things like a Kindle e-reader or I'm using things like Kindle or, or iBooks on my iPad. I just find that having electronic books makes them incredibly portable, make them super accessible. I can switch between different books quite quickly. I don't have to carry a lot of books with me. And I really like the note-taking features, especially for a lot of my non-fiction books here. And I can review those notes and I can enjoy sort of revisiting the material. I'm also a big fan of being able to quickly search for say a word definition. If I encounter a word that I'm not familiar with, I can build my vocabulary quick vocabulary, apparently not my enunciation, but I can I can build my vocabulary quite a bit by just hitting definition of it. Or maybe there's something in a book that references a historical event, then what I can do is I can do a search to understand more of what I'm reading. Now there is a caution though, if you read your ebooks on a device, for example, an iPad that has other apps or potential distractions, then you might have to exercise a bit more discipline to make sure that you read that, you know, 25, 50, 75 pages that you're going to read every day. I do really like the Kindle portable devices because it's a focused experience. You're really, the only choice you have is reading and you also do get the word lookup so you can do definitions, but you don't get as much as say if you want to look up a historical event or something. By breaking things down from a year to a month to a week, 
to a day and building variety into your reading and using the tricks I've shared here, you might find yourself reading even more than 84 books a year. I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas on this. How many books are you typically reading in a year? Would you like to read more? Are you happy with what you're reading right now? Do you read every day? Is it, has it become a daily habit for you? Do you read more than one book at once? Do you read ebooks or do you listen to audiobooks? Do you read graphic novels? Thank you so much for watching. I'm very interested in your comments and I hope we can have a good dialogue in the comments section below on what it takes to read more and benefit more from that reading.